Hey guys, Aaron Edgar here, and you're listening to the NZ Drummer Podcast. Enjoy. You're listening to the NZ Drummer Podcast, in-depth conversations with local and international drummers. My name's Andrew Rooney, full-time drummer and drum tutor based right here in Auckland, New Zealand. If you have a passion for drumming, welcome. You're in the right place. Practice and career tips, behind-the-scenes stories, and real-world advice from the best drummers on the planet. Let's do it. Gentlemen, welcome to the NZ Drummer Podcast. G'day. I thought it might be nice, as there's four of us today, if we do a round of introductions. Jamie, we've already had you on the podcast. Yeah. So uh, maybe we could start with you. Yeah, sure. Jamie St. Marat. I play for a band called Ulcerate. I guess loosely termed, we're a, we're a death metal band, but sort of like to push boundaries a little bit. Been around for 20 years, currently working on our next album, so over the next few weeks. And yeah, I play pearl drums. Uh, Axis pedals and minor cymbals. Beautiful. My name's Mark Reese. I play drums for predominantly Subtract. We've been going about 20 years or more as well. Yeah, I would have to. Well, it's a metal podcast, so I have to say I'm metal, don't I? We're pretty metal. Um, more, more metal than I ever get, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, what a, I play Charmer drums. <clears throat> I play Pisces cymbals. That's the classic metal combo, really, is isn't it? it? Is That's it? what I would think of. As well, the metal so, combo? Oh, I don't know. I used to maybe think it was – no, it could still be – Zildjian's still very up there. Minor has now got a huge profile with, yeah, yeah. with yeah. Them, especially the extreme metal. Yeah. I, I, guess, I guess Sabian well, – like, they all make good symbols, they don't would, they? Yeah, yeah they, they would do well. Yeah. Mm. We don't want to rule ourselves out of any endorsements. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Jeremy Suckling. I used to play in Dawn of Azazel and Molest the Episcopate and Set on End, playing for 25 years. Yeah, play time of drums, W pedals. Awesome. Disclaimer off the top, I'm not a metal guy. And I think I mentioned to you guys that Def Leppard's probably about as metal as I get. Well, hey. That stuff sounds like a Celine Dion ballad now, eh? Well, yeah. yeah. I'm oh. <laughs> showing my age, though, but I actually, I like the early stuff like High and Dry when, the, when he had two arms. Not a lot of people right. know he was a mean drummer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, not so, saying that he's he's not good with one, but mm. he was really, really good. Um, he was a, one of the up and comers, and then that probably gone. changed the course of the whole band, really, didn't it? Because they had to go a lot more stadium. Yeah, Ooh. I think luckily though <laughs> they true. were already, again, in my opinion, they were already pretty. Their profile was up there. Somebody lopped my arm off tomorrow, and I don't think people are going to be lining up to make me a custom <laughs> kit <laughs> to accommodate my missing limb. Maybe. Well, you never know. Think, you never, never know. know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how we got onto Def Lever, but <laughs> you started. I'm, that. Sorry, that's my <laughs> fault. So yeah, I'm looking forward to learning some stuff today. You know, it's time to share the love. I don't want the podcast just to be me and my mates talking about how cool we are. You know, <laughs> so it's a it's a totally different scene. And I got a bit of an insight chatting to Jamie, sort of how things work and with touring. And I guess in some ways, the more extreme you go, the more niche. You yeah. get in, right? And yeah. Yeah. if your band's, you know, 11 out of 10 when it comes to how hard out you guys <laughs> are aiming to be, where do you think you'd sort of pitch oh. your band on that <laughs> spinal tap scale, man? Well, it would be much more on the, the accessible end. But I think right. I'd call Ulcerate extreme metal with no hesitation at all. Whereas yeah. uh, to a lot of, in my opinion, again, a lot of non-drummers or non-musicians, because it's got the heavy vote, and the same with, with Jeremy's bands he's been in, to the non like metal listener, as soon as they hear those heavy vocals, yeah, they, that's the, oh, it's death metal. Yeah, yeah, you're into Satan. It's death metal. <laughs> oh, what, why are you so angry? 
Whereas all those things mm. are, are actually wrong, you know. Mm. And this is going to be really all, good to all, get into. Not, yeah, well, I'm, not, I'm pretty angry. <laughs> Jamie's pretty angry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, de- it's definitely the barrier. Yeah. The first is. barrier. But I, I remember first hearing that sort of stuff and not being able to make sense of it at all. But you, you find something interesting in it. You either do or you don't. And if you do find something interesting, mm. it's intriguing at the very least. And then if there's something in the music that kind of hooks you in, you persevere. Yeah. And then you find, oh, it's an acquired taste. And then you, you end up going, oh, not everyone sounds the same doing that style of vocal. And then you start liking them. And then you're trapped, you know. I'm at, really at risk tonight of sounding ignorant because it's not my world. But would it be fair to say it's almost a bit like spicy food? You know, you get a bit of spicy food yep. and then your tolerance yep. start, yes. starts Absolutely. edging up a little bit. Yep. And then it's like, oh, I want something more challenging. And yep. then you just sort of... Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Oh, something totally. like that? When I was growing up, because I'm, I'm probably... Older, well, not probably. I am, but older than these not two. Not probably, man. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Um, but Motorhead was the first band that reaction was the same. So when right. I was a young teenager, as soon as people heard his voice, you either like it or you yeah. can't stand it. Yeah, totally. there's no middle ground. Oh, it's yep. okay. No, when that, I guess that's what attracted to me. It was like if you like this, and it's the same with gigs with heavy metal and extreme bands. This is not just a casual night out. You either like it or you should probably go. You know what I mean? It's not for the faint of heart. You're either into it or you're not. But I would also say that that applies to any niche style of music or art form. Yep. Like it's definitely not just a he- heavy metal. Yeah. And I know that there's a bit of a perception of like, particularly from a lot of a broader audience, you have to be a maniac to be to be into the style of music or yeah. like it's only, you know, it's only for cool kind of, you know, it's like, it's it's not about that. It's just that it's because it's it's such a niche, you, you know, you have to spend time with it to get used to it, you know. Yeah. But that goes for, like, any style of music, like, mm-hmm. um, and, 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 like, if, if we're talking on drums, like, some of the most fascinating players, and I'm sure that we all sit watching YouTube videos of, when you first start out playing drums, you will not be able to decipher Virgil's playing. Okay. And the first time you hear it, you're like, oh, what's so special about that? You have to acquire a taste, you have to d- yeah. figure out what what's being played, why, and then you go, oh, and he's practicing mm. 10 hours a day to play that stuff. Well, maybe there's something hard about what he's doing, you know? <laughs> it's the same deal, you know? Yeah. Sometimes you need to actually see what someone's playing to, yeah. to work out what they're doing too. You yep. can't mm. distinguish it just by hearing it. Yeah, totally. Something yeah. like what he plays or Thomas Lang or any of those crazy guys. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've had yeah. comments from girlfriends or friends in the past who not drummers, they like music, but I'll be watching something and normally, don't get me wrong, there's no way that all the geeky drum stuff that we watch, most of my friends and family, if they're around, I'm not playing that stuff. Mm. You're not going to enjoy that. But they'll be, I've had people say I'll be watching somebody like Thomas Lang or just so, so good. Like you were saying, Jamie, to their perception, I've heard, I've heard comments like, oh, but isn't he just making it up on the spot and yeah, just, yeah, just so. hitting whatever? Yeah, yeah. I've had comments about that about my play. Yeah. Or just, he just does random fills and just hits whatever. Just, and go just, really fast. just goes real fast and just you know close your eyes and mm. hope for the best. Before I was aware of subdivision and those kind of concepts, yeah. I always used to think – Great drummers just had great timing in that they could just play something yeah. and then they just managed to hit the crash at the right time and it was like, that was miraculous. Yeah. And then <laughs> later on you think, oh, okay, it's, yeah. it's subdivisions, I was having, right? I was, I was yeah. having that conversation with a chap I work with who's um, Guy Martin. He's amazing. He's like, oh, you play drums? He's like, I checked out some of your videos online. He's not really – I mean, he's, a, he's into music, but he's not a drummer. He's not yeah. – and he's like – He doesn't listen to podcasts then. Yeah, exactly. Oh, get exactly. Him on but he was um, – <laughs> He's like, how do you, when you're doing all that, the real fast stuff and all your limbs, he's like, how do you make it from the start of the, how do you count the, the, all the parts? How do you put all the, the yeah. beats in there? Yeah. You're just talented, man. But, well, yeah, talent. exactly. Yeah, of course yeah. it's talent, right? Cause, and it's like, you don't, go, you don't count to a hundred and a thousand, you know? <laughs> you subdivide. Yeah. It's either eighth, I, or I feel the quarters. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. You know, oh, yeah. The other, yeah. You know, and then the, you've lost them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But I mean, just that concept of yeah, playing higher tempo stuff, regardless mm. of style. Like you watch some of the old um, Tony Williams stuff. What's he doing with his right hand there? Just bouncing on it, the ping, 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 you know? Like, yeah, crazy. It's really hard to talk to civilians. I find about drumming. Yeah. That's best I, not I'll, if there's any compliments, I'll just take it and say, "Oh, thank you very much." Yeah, and that's it, and oh, just course. leave it. Yeah. And because how can you get into any of that? <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but Jamie just mentioned Tony Williams here, and I, mm. I was watching. It's awesome. Um, I've been a fan of his forever, but Drumio did a – I'm allowed to mention Drumio? Go for did it. Did a um, – Former guest, Jared Polk. Greg Bissonnette. <laughs> they, I don't know if you've seen it. It's great, it's, but it's Greg Bissonnette who's an amazing versatile player. Oh, yeah. So that's quite new, right? Um, yeah, it's just yeah, come yeah, out in the last yeah. week. Awesome. I haven't watched it yet. And um, 
it's funny because he talk, he actually got to have lessons with Tony Williams. Right. And he goes on about how before Tony Williams died, believe it or not, he was getting into metal. So <laughs> really? Greg Bessonette turns up to Tony Williams for lessons and then after a little while or whatever, Tony Williams is like, can you show me some double kick stuff? Mm. Greg Bissonette's like, what, me? Mm. Show you stuff. He's like, yeah, yeah, well, I, I quite like this double kick and this metal stuff. It's quite exciting. Mm-hmm. Comes back a week later and Tony Williams is just like <laughs> <laughs> on his kick. And, and apparently mm. the last stuff he did was like he was going to do a metal project. I love it. Heavy guitars. Yeah, yeah. It didn't really yeah. see the light He's day, the but. classic. He's a lifelong student. Well, I'm like that. Oh, yeah. I think we're yeah. still yeah. discussing like new that. drummers yeah. and new things that I like. And the better you get, the more humble you become, right? I think you do, yeah. You really do. Because you learn how bad you really are. <laughs> and how good to some other people. And yeah. you under- but you understand. Yes, you're learning more, but then you understand, oh, my God, I knew he was good and now I've yeah. got better. I really understand how mm. unattainable some of those guys are. I've always been fascinated with the – Famous session guys, mm. you know, Hal Blaine. Or I'm a Jeff Carey freak. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. But it's not till you're sitting in the control room. Oh, yeah. It's and shocking, you're listening shocking. back to your track and you go, yeah. what? Yeah. There's something wrong. Yeah. Something wrong on the playback, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you think, these guys, I can't play one bar yeah. the same as the next. These guys are just laying down track after track after track. Yeah. yeah you must have heard the isolated Picaro tracks. There's a few floating around on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Live too, eh? Yeah, like the Rosanna. No click. Yeah, and like the Rosanna. It's just... That's mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better without those other instruments. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> you can't fuck with Rosanna, though. Oh, you can't. I mean, no, I'm not gonna. Yeah, yeah. It's I've been working on that for years and just getting it. You know, I'm pretty close now, but it's it's kind of like one of those things that even with simpler stuff like Phil Rudd, people don't understand. I teachings taught me a lot about the way people perceive stuff. I'll teach them ACDC, and they'll be like, "That's easy. That's boring." Yeah, yeah, and they don't even get yeah. three bars in. They're playing, going, dugga, 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 dugga. Yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Oh, I was playing Phil. Why? Because it's boring. It's not how the song goes, mate. And then I try and explain to them, like, we could get a hundred drummers, and there's the beat on the page, or, or listen to it. Yeah, and we we're going to play the same beat. And ninety nine of us, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. And then the last guy to come in would be him, and he'd play it, and the rest of us would go, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep, yeah, that's <laughs> it, that's it, that's, yeah. it, that's it. The thing that we we're talking about before, like the eternal student. Scenario: The better you get, the more you start appreciating nuance, right? When I was a teenager, I was just infatuated with playing fast. All I wanted to do was just up the tempo, right? Mm-hmm. And now it's like it's the complete opposite. It's, it's the devil in details, you know? Things like micro timings, feel, playing behind a, a head. I've been lucky enough to like the last drums that I recorded was recorded with Jamie. Right. Um, which was awesome because I know him, he knows the, the way I play. I know he's not going to. Jamie engineered it, do you mean? Yeah. Mm. Oh, right. Just like he does all his own. Mm. Just like all the all the go. ulcerate stuff. That, I didn't know that. Oh, well, here you go. I don't know what I'm doing, but we, we, yes, we, give, it, we, we um, give it our best shot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but um, the only way you could teach that kind of thing was would be to get the kid and go, here's some wave files, all right, I'll pull them up in Pro Tools or Logic, whatever, and I'll show you different drummers. And you could see people like Phil Rudd or John Bonham, and you could see every single snare drum, if you gridded it up, mm-hmm. would fall a millisecond behind the beat, but... Mm it would be the same every time. Because yeah, if you're me, time. you might yeah. get a couple behind the beat. Yeah. <laughs> and then hopefully most of them are bang on. I'm trying to play them on. I'm not trying to play behind, but some of mine would fall yeah. behind. Some are on and some would race. Try and mimic that. How does it? And record yeah. it. Yeah. Record it on your phone. Yeah, Watch exactly. it. Back. Yeah, 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 totally. Back to recording. Eh? The amount yeah. of times I've, I'm not going to put it on YouTube, but I'll just put something on record. It's either a new idea or something I'm practicing. You'll play it and your perception will be, oh, it wasn't too bad. And then you watch it back and go, oh, it's ropey, man. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's crucial. You know, I mean, that's the Benny Greb. The first clinic he did over here is invaluable advice. He's like, the second that you start working on something that you feel is really difficult, a difficult concept, and it feels like you're not getting anywhere with it, track it. I think we might have talked about this. Yeah, in yeah, that's right. So you, you track it, and then you track it a week later. Track it over a year. You won't feel the progression. Then you take the last recording and the first recording, play it back to back, and you're like, oh, yeah, okay, fall I do over. have it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's, mm. that's the only, yeah, I mean, we record everything we do, every jam almost, we're recording stuff to listen back because you have no concept because you're too busy like either counting or like trying to work out the sticking for this tricky part that you're coming up with and you're like, because it feels complicated or feels a little bit gnarly, you're not listening. Mm. Not certainly not listening to That's it. right, yeah, yeah. So you track it and then you're like, oh, You're ex- using all your brain power to execute the part you, and you're yeah. not listening at all. Exactly, yeah. 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 Mm. And until it's internalised and it's muscle memory... These aren't even really working. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no. 
See, this is funny because this, I reckon this has popped up more than anything else on the podcast and all my guests are huge on it. Recording yep. yourself? Yeah. I got told it, probably a nice way of people telling me that I sucked, <laughs> but uh, I got told it just endlessly and yeah. I ignored it Yeah. until I got a rude awakening in a control room Yeah. and an engineer said, yeah, shuffles are pretty hard, aren't they? <laughs> I was yeah. like, ouch. Totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you want to do a public service announcement for young drummers, but record yourself. Yeah, well, and then man, it's gold. like you get into some notes. See me recording with Jamie, easy. I don't have to worry, but there's no unknowns there. But I've been in, you know, recorded at Roundhead and recorded at York Street where you'd be sweating it out and suffering because you're not happy with the – you've done your pre-production, your practice, but all that, today I'm not getting it. Yeah. And mm. next thing there's random people. You yeah. don't even fucking know <laughs> – <laughs> Coming in, who's yeah. there? I'm halfway through a drum take, and I'm j- this is my third go at it, and I'm not feeling yeah, very good. Not, about yeah. it. There's random yeah. people standing there, There's and the you can see them going. commenting while you're trying to do a yeah. take. You're like, what the fuck? You know? so is that record buttons on like your you, second you, guess? What was it like yeah. when you, you recorded in Florida, right? Yeah, what was that? Uh, Mana, which is what? That's um, like um, kind of known. Yeah, yeah, or, Eric Rutan's yeah. studio. It was, yeah, that's right. it was cool. Yeah. yeah, first time around with Dawn, was I'd only just joined, so it was quite. Quite rough and had to, you know, do um, drop ins and stuff, but mm. second time was good. If we bring it back to metal, all right, <laughs> only metal guys, yeah. Um, what can you tell us about the Auckland metal scene? Is there anything sort of particular about it that's interesting or venues or the amount of gigs going on? There's a mm. lot that can be said about venues, not with there's bugger there's, all, there's none, there's none. So you've got Whammy Bar and you've got. Thirsty dog. Yes, yeah, changed it's a lot a in the last sort of five King's years. Arms, yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and even Power Station used to I moved to Auckland like over twenty years ago. Even back then you'd still get you know, you get two or three decent rock whatever bands with a reasonable profile and they could put on a show at, yeah, at right. the power station and yeah. get a good crowd. But I think now the overheads it's too expensive if you've got to be right. It's tough. Like, I don't know if it's just a metal thing or if it's just more of a niche thing or if it's just music in general. But I, a, I have a sneaking, in general, I think it's in general. Yeah. Um, aside from, obviously, if you're an arena act, you're safe. But for those of us that are anything less than that, you know, I guess in any style of music, people aren't going to shows. It's just what it is. Like, and that's, reckon, that's a worldwide thing, you know. Do you um, think booze is part of it, the price of booze these days? Well, see, I, it, it might be part yeah, it, of it. But it could be. Yeah. Could be. Who wants to pay 10 bucks for a beer? And especially now. Bucks and the rest, mate. Yeah. 13, 14 some bars. Yeah. I think for me too, part of it is if a band's coming I haven't seen in a while, for example, just randomly, it could be Ozzy Osbourne who cancelled. I've seen him a bunch of times. We were lucky enough we played with Ozzy back in 2000 or 99, something like a long time ago. Got to meet him, meet Zach Wilde, cool dude. But he's a lot older now. Yeah. And so he was coming over. I'm like, mm, I've seen him, saw Black Sabbath last time. Oh, I'll check out his gig from last week and – in Japan, wherever it, wherever it was, yeah, that's a that's oh, a real problem. Shit. No, oh shit! Oh god, yeah. that's not that. Oh, his vocals. Oh, so that was my decision, mate. Go, yeah. I'm not going. But that is a that phenomenon right there. It's this, a huge this, factor. So everything's at our fingertips on YouTube, yeah, exactly. And it's a lot of time it's multi cams, or it's like like when we're touring, like literally the next like that night, people are putting up um just iPhone videos and shit on YouTube, and that doesn't do anyone any doesn't justice. Do, no, nah, and mm-hmm. all that happens is you get. We're, we fear okay, but like a lot of the time, you know, it's YouTube comments. So you're going to be like, oh, it sounds like shit. I can't hear the guitars. You can't stop an iPhone. <laughs> it's a fucking yeah. $500 phone, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and what all this does, right, is it breeds this, like you said, you saw one bad performance. That might have just been an off night, but it instantly, and mm. you being you, it's like, you know, you can discern between what. Yeah. Yeah, right. And I've seen him heaps before, so exactly. I'm like, I don't need yeah. to see him again if he's going to be like that. But all that this stuff is doing is it's removing mystique, right? So, yeah. like, yeah. this is music in general, and I guess movies too, right? Any form of entertainment, but music especially. And it's the same thing with, like, the Spotify. Everything's just right there. It's at our fingertips. Bands put a song out, and within 15 seconds, someone's already commenting. Sounds like shit. <laughs> Fuck. Like, no one's spend- listening or spending yeah. the time with music. Like, it used to be a ritual, right? They like, probably didn't yes. even get past the start of the second verse, too. Yeah. That's you know, and they've made their mind up not to me. It's too disposable for them mm, now because yeah. it's just getting thrown at them from every angle, yeah. eh? And there's, like, this whole concept of album is going away now. Um, yeah, that, that, that scares me because that's is, what I've always been yeah. about. So that's why I started playing drums, to me, was... For a start, you start seeing dudes playing albums that look just like you. He's just in jeans and a T-shirt. 
he's a scumbag like me. Listen to that. <laughs> I remember I saw this comment about it's um it's a Motorhead album. And they're all dressed as um they're in the desert. It's Ace of Spades. And they're all dressed oh, yeah. as um they got leathers on like sort of cowboy hats and stuff like that. And Gary Holt was from uh, Slayer was commenting, and when, I think his mem- memory for it, he picked up that album and listened to it. And of course, having like you say, there's no social media, nothing to mm-hmm. read. He just got the album cover, yeah, and he got it home and listened to it. Who are these Mexicans, and how can they play so fast? <laughs> he couldn't look it up anywhere. What are you yeah, going to go yeah. to the library no, exactly. and read yeah. up? Yeah. Exactly. You going to go to the library and read up about? But your it, and it would this this no. kind of shit would keep you at arm's length from from the artist or whatever. And so when a show would come, man, it was like the most exciting thing ever. You know, You've, mm. oh, you don't yeah. you don't have a way to evaluate it against. You're not mm. you're not seeing. Th- you can go on YouTube now and, and and watch thirty different shows from a band and make your mind up if you actually want to go to the show. You know. Yeah. So that we t- I reckon we're totally feeling that. Here in mm. Auckland, yeah. <clears throat> I think when all of us, well, started around the same time, more yeah. or less, give or take. Um, oh, a and, couple of years he'd start. Man. Yeah, and but but <laughs> this the crucial ingredient I think for us is like we weren't necessarily tape trading kind of era, but definitely pre YouTube, pre Facebook, yep. pre all the like internet was around but only just shows were fucking exciting man people were pumped yeah. to go out you remember the past with rose tinted glasses mm. or whatever but i do de- i definitely feel that local shows and particularly in our end of the spectrum of metal people were pumped man like it would yeah, be like yeah. five ten dollar shows shows would be super memorable because it would be f- super violent like mosh pits um <laughs> yeah uh, you know it's a celebration because it was passion you know it's like yeah um and it's it doesn't matter i'm waiting for this for six months so yeah i'm gonna go nuts yeah and mm. like also, the, the the idea of like getting together and, and starting bands and uh, it was intoxicating. And I feel that what used to happen is the Auckland extreme scene when we first started was like maybe a handful, fifteen to twenty people that kind of comprised all the bands. <laughs> right, but. There were a lot of bands because there was no like you're not always feeling like you have to compare yourself to what are they doing or like oh I don't, you know you just basically just you just make stuff, put it out there and. If people like it, cool. If not, mm. well, that was. Two, I mean, know? and two of those bands were Ulcerate and and Dawn. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, very different bands, though. You, yeah. you'd call them both extreme metal, but very different bands. Yeah, for sure. Totally different. Yeah. You know what I mean. And same with my band as well. Mm. But very, what it also different. does is it created um, a really cool kind of like ecosystem of really interesting music. Like Dawn, Force mm. to Submit, uh, Grey Malkin. Uh, th- there's a ton of bands around that time. Um, and we all sounded a million miles apart, even though it was sort of the same kind of, you know, tightened it scene. I, I don't know. I just haven't, in the last few years, I haven't really seen a whole lot of kind of, it's, I don't know, it just feels different now. It feels different. Yeah. Like, yeah, it is. Yeah. When we spoke previously, I think I mentioned to you, you know, saving up for my first album as a kid. Huge, yeah. Saving up, that was a lot of money. Yeah. It was For a little kid. Yeah. You know, uh, actually, it was Def Leppard. <laughs> Going back to Def Leppard, <laughs> hysteria. <laughs> I really wanted yeah, it. Yeah. You know, I'd seen pour some sugar on, on yeah, me yeah. on TV yeah. and I was just so excited and saved up pocket money, the anticipation. Mm. And then you get this, I remember mean, whether it was vinyl or cassette, it was one of the two. Yeah. Our first and, album um, I bought was on tape. Yeah. yeah. Reading the yeah. liner notes, yeah. I knew who engineered the album. Yeah. yeah. I knew all the credits, everything. Yeah. And it was just yeah, oh, this man, so into it, eh? So, dude, that's the, more the ritual way. aspect. Yeah, right? yeah. And you sit down and you put the album on from start to finish and you sit there on your bed or whatever and you read yeah. every lyric and yeah. then you read yeah, the yeah. thanks and then you check out other bands. Who are they thanking? Yeah. And yeah. Who's this guy? Who, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, and the album experience, right? So yeah. they would stagger the album. You know, you'd have the ballad in a certain place and the yeah. big that opening means number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was – but yeah. that's gone now. But yeah. you had to be – you had to be – Careful, you know, the way that all those albums that I love from the 60s, 70s, 80s, even the 90s and early 2000s, the bands were like, here's our 10 songs. Okay, well, now we've got to split them in two. What's side one? Yeah. Yep. And now we've got to hit, we've got to hit them with track one's got yeah, to be, yeah. help, you know, yeah. start with the band. But we've also got to end side one yep. yeah, yeah, with yeah. some sort of statement. And then we've got to start side two yeah. with a statement. Oh, now it's just a yeah. playlist on Spotify. Yeah, yeah. it's fucking bo- it's, yeah. Like it's it, horrifying, man. Just never skip, 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 skip. Yeah. And then album um, tracks, right? Yeah. So you hear all the big hits. Uh, I don't, you know, mm. if you're in pop world, you're gravitating towards the hits, but then you find all the album tracks. Which is usually yeah, where the usually really the cool ones, shit yeah. is. Yeah. Cool yeah. shit, yeah. I was so scared that Black Album was going to fucking suck, right? Because, right. you know, everybody knew you know, they'd, just, they'd done justice for all their threat. They're still a thrash band, you know what I mean? And then everybody heard into Sandman and it was kind of split. Mm. So a lot of the Guns N' Roses fans and, and the rock fans were like, yeah, this is badass. And us thrash kids were like, 
fuck yeah. this. What the fuck? So I was so paranoid I got my CD and I put it on the CD flat and I'm, I don't want to hear this like anybody else, so I'm going to listen to it from the last track through. <laughs> <laughs> don't need to hear that in Sandman again. No, nope, yep. no. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so I listened to it in a completely different order. I was, I was really worried. I mean, in retrospect, it's a good record. It's not a, yeah. they're not a thrash band. That's 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 where they change. They're a different band. Then and there's you know? nothing wrong with changing, right? No, like there's a, there is something wrong with sucking though. Yeah, <laughs> which a, but don't there's mention also, other records <laughs> later on down the track. But yeah, I will trash say, can <laughs> snares. I will say though, in metal, particularly the the further reaches of the metal styles, changing style arbitrarily is kind of a bad look. Doing something like Metallica did, that walks a very very fine line. Yeah. I think it's really transparent, though, if someone's just gunning yeah. for the pop yep. sales. Yep. I think mm. it's really easy to spot. Yeah, it, it, and that's the pro- And they think that we're not doing it. They're like, oh, no, mm. that we're, no it's, it's a, a band. It, always, it is always transparent. A band that, uh, I mean, I don't want to badmouth anyone, but a band that stood out to me was... They had quite an underground thing you going see, on. I and then I, mm. the next album, they got quite successful and... The singer's got his shirt off and all the songs and you know oiled up and stuff and it's like, what the hell happened to these guys? We used to joke because I used to work at Real Groovy Records and a lot of record (laughs) store. We the joke was, oh here we go. What's the sweepstakes on how long it'll take before the singer takes his shirt off? Mm. Nobody's even talking about their music. (laughs) No, I remember when they first came out, they were quite a, a sort of weed. Orientated band and a bunch of them had a bit scody with dreadlocks and stuff and there's yeah. you know marijuana symbolism and then they cleaned up their act yeah. big time and then they're singing about all the girls. tempos are slowed down um, and, you know yeah, and that's yeah. that that to me is blatantly obviously <laughs> I'm not even in the band and I'm embarrassed it's like Ooh. Yeah. yeah you know um, with kind of your world you're talking about a lighter shade of selling out are you? yeah like I just, mean uh, yeah and it's it's kind of like the further you get the further yeah. you get towards the the harsher you get. Even the slightest transgression is like <laughs> yeah. fuck, fuck, yeah. yeah, fuck this shit. Basically, like I love a lot of the really super harsh shit, but I'm not elitist like that, you know. Mm. Like I, I get why bands want to change and, yeah. and do different things, but I also do not appreciate when bands arbitrarily do the cash grab kind of scenario. Right. Or like, yeah, it, it has to be done with integrity and and, and yeah. passion and heart, you know. Otherwise, it's like ugh, I, 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 I can't feel that, the art in it anymore, you know? Again, my spicy food in LGA. If you've worked your way <laughs> yeah. up to Vindaloo, yep. you're not going to appreciate butter well, chicken after that. It kind of, but, it, but, it does, <laughs> but it does, yeah, yeah. On some, for some bands, absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't apply to all bands, you know? Sure. Mm. And all styles. It, I don't even know how you navigate knowing how this, these rules work. But, but you, spot it, you can spot they definitely, it, yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. Not a, it's not necessarily a metal thing. You get this kind yeah. of stuff in jazz, you know, anything that has a real uh, hardcore tradition behind it, you know, yep. uh, a tradition yep. and a certain way of doing things. Some of the worst trolling comments I see on YouTube are from jazz fans. Oh, oh he, jazz can't, he, can't, he can't swing. Yeah, Wickle can't swing. No, nah, Wickle's okay. <laughs> I like um, Wickle's videos, yeah. Yeah. I love um, yeah. Ginger Baker's quote. Well, it's a bunch of them actually. He's such an angry man, but still, I thought he was hilarious. He'd say things like, um, "My favorite drummer of all time is John Bonham." Right? Ginger Baker's opinion: Bonham couldn't swing a sack of shit. <laughs> <laughs> if That's he was, so if he was still alive, yeah. you could ask him. Ha! Yeah. That's right. Ginger Baker. And Clapton opinion. came out and sort of backed him up on it. Well, he could shuffle though, and that's one thing. Like getting back to just briefly on teaching, mm. don't. Confuse shuffling with swinging. <laughs> yeah. No, right. no, 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 no. That's very different. Mm. Tss, tss, tss. I can't swing. Spent no time trying to swing. I envy it. You know, I, yeah, lo- yeah. I love listening to jazz, but to me it's kind of still this like uh, unattainable art form that I sort of admire from afar. Right. Shuffling I can get on board with. I'm like, yeah, double paradiddle. Put a shuffle over. The- yeah, I can because mm-hmm. there's a lot of double paradiddle stuff and metal and triplet stuff. But once you get to swing it where it's – we're so much in the world of kick, snare, kick, snare, mm. whatever way you want to do it. When you get to jazz, it's like, no, we're leading with the ride. Yeah. This is the dominant thing. And like Bissonette says, the kick and snare becomes salt and pepper. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. Is, it's it's this a totally is, different mindset. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where you yeah. get, and like you'll get rock and metal players trying to play jazz. They're still rattling around the toms and snare, real, you know, yeah, yeah. really decisively. And, yeah. and, and all they've done is just play their rides and hats really quietly. It's like, that's not jazz either, you know. So. Right. Yeah, jazz kind of frightens me. I really admire jazz because I think that's the origin of all complex music. It's, it's the classical drumming. It's, mm. it's, it's classical drumming, you know, if, if, if oh, it's compared still, to classical music. Yeah. That's where all the techniques yeah. – I mean, watch Buddy Rich now. He would still – if he was freak. born, he'd just murder everybody. He's just, in it. He's just <laughs> yeah. insane. It's, yeah. 
And yeah. to think he never practiced. Mm. He just See, played. Hey, he we plays might have... in suits. How the hell did he I do know. in the fucking two suits? Shoes suit, in suits. <laughs> Mental. I mean, well, yeah, we should be talking more about metal, metal drummers, but th- See, to me is, that's all connected. This is an interesting you know? kind of myth bust already. Mm. We haven't even talked about double people, kick no. at all. You know. I imagine a lot of people would think that it's metal, metal, metal. I think you mentioned your favourite drummer is Benny Greb, Jamie, yeah. when we chatted the, previously. My, well, yeah, from a facility, from a drum, drumming perspective, all my favourite players are... The really big names in drumming, right? You know, Chris Coleman's, JoJo's, yeah, Benny Greb, George uh, Lang, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, Mark right. Miniman, right? Yeah, guys that are undeniable. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. but in terms of like their musical output, do I enjoy listening to it? Not, not so much. Like I uh, appreciate it, and I, I have like I got Weckl albums. I do see the art, but it doesn't do anything for me from a mm. from a musical standpoint. Still, what I listen to, ninety percent of what I listen to is nasty shit. Mm. But I like lots of different stuff. I just l- mostly listen to nasty so stuff. So you're kind know? of compartmentalizing drumming yeah. and yeah. And music I se- one of the, separate sometimes? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And some of my favorite drumming is the most horrible sounding, sloppy, gnarly <laughs> stuff. Yeah. It's just super greasy. Yeah, and it was yeah, <laughs> or like <laughs> I guess I guess violent. Um but that's not this it's I don't know. I I can't explain it. No, yeah, good all job. I all I can say is that when I was thirteen or fourteen, I got hooked on harsh metal. And it hasn't like hasn't let go of me yet, you know. But at the same time, I can flip between playing a revenge song and playing Phil Collins. I can fall asleep to. Yeah, there's no transition. It's like filthy can, shit. You, I mean, uh, you're I, I, a big you fan know. of Phil Collins too, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. What I realised, he's a badass fusion oh. drummer as well. Oh, d- yeah, that's Dude, early, early genesis. Trick of the tail was that's the first one that I, for me, that's the one where he was. He came out as a frontman, but he was still the drummer. That album there, I, I, I uh, would say that probably at, even above Benny Grab, I'd put Phil because it's wow, because it's go. because it taps into a nostalgia thing for me when I was yeah. a kid. He mm. was the, the guy that I heard and I started playing. I wanted to play drums. Mm. It's just undeniable. Oh, you know? that would be my most requested Phil. Can you teach me in the air tonight? Yeah, of course. Of You've course. seen that meme that course. meme video with the deer clatters across that. <laughs> <laughs> I have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. I saw we we flew to Melbourne and saw Phil uh, in February. Oh, did you? All right. Fucking. How yeah, uh, was that? Was it good? Oh, it, 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 it might be the best show I've ever seen. Oh. It it's was a beast, man. It's a yeah. Beast. And he was he had a fucked up back, so he didn't he didn't drum. His son was drumming. Right. It was astonishing. Like, was it really good. Really. Real good. Oh, yeah. You're not supposed to be able to sing and play drums that good, though. Eh? That's nah. just stupid. We should probably talk about some you know actual metal guys. I mean, Jeremy, go favorite metal drummers. That's the funny thing because it's a good opportunity to say I don't even think I can consider myself a metal drummer. Mm, like, yeah. At the end of the day, I would never go into my practice room and sit down and play a blast beat or You're a, just a drummer. double kick, like straight off the bat. Like, right. I'd obviously work up to it or whatever, but um, it's, it's stuff definitely it's not. Yeah, it's not stuff I. I no, practice. play a funk it's, it's, groove or something fusion y or yeah, just, just something yeah. light and groovy, you know? But um, what's the question again? <laughs> what's your, what's your favourite metal drummer? Yeah. Favourite metal drummer? Yeah, give us, oh, give us someone that doesn't. just. It really like. blows my mind all the time is um, Mario De Plantia yeah, from Gojira. Yeah, he's, he's so solid and so tasty and consistent yeah. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, I, I would say that my favourite kind of metal drummers are not necessarily – it's definitely not the, the speed thing. No, it's, I don't it's, care It's like someone like Mario who has no. um, ideas, you know? Yeah. Someone like Kai Hardo, who's currently in Winter Sun. He's like, oh, finished, yeah. dude. Or oh, Eloy yeah. Casagrande from oh, yeah. oh, he's, a, he's a monster. He plays yeah. like he's got no play. family. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Have you seen that performance at Modern Drummer Is it when he was young? Yeah. 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 Mind-blowing, eh? Yeah, yeah. And he was a student of what's that? Aquiles. What's his name? He's the other Brazilian. Yeah. 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 He was a student yeah. as, a, as, a, as right. a youngster. So he's sort of... The thing is that, like, the best metal drummers don't just play metal. Yeah. Best metal players take influence from everywhere and would mm. probably be sitting in this room going, oh, I'm not really a metal drummer. I just They get enough I, metal out of their own band. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you yeah. can tell the ones that have started playing drums playing metal drums because they can't play a groove or something yeah. to save their life. They can't even yeah, open their hi hat. They don't even know subtleties like, subtle properly, properly. like so. you know, double strokes <laughs> or just even anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like the, the, it's, I've noticed that a lot. The mm. fundamentals are missing. Obviously, you got guys like, yeah. got to say, Thomas Hark. From my sugar, right? Yeah, he's a, he's one of those guys oh, yeah. that's yeah. got so much more to him than just just playing fast and yep. and, and loud. You know mm. what I mean? Well, he's kind of peerless as well. <laughs> yeah, we well, got people yeah. like I, mean, I wouldn't call them metal as such, but Danny Carey, obviously. I, I don't think anybody without Danny Carey, nobody would really care that much about Tool. I'm not being harsh, but to me, he's the genius in the band. The other guys are good. 
Certainly a phenomenal drummer. Yeah. Oh, he, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, right. I, I don't he's like right, him as much right, as I used yeah. to, but he can't. He's one of the, again one of those guys yep. that undeniable. You just put it. On, I put. A, I actually yeah. hear a lot of. Um, I, hear, I put him and Gavin Harrison in the same I love Gavin. mental part of my brain. Mm-hmm. They're doing the same kind of like really tasty, almost nothing. Mm. <laughs> You got to play it, and you're like, "Oh, that's actually mm. really complex." What he's Gavin saying. Harrison's so clean, though. Eh? Oh, it's, it's just, oh, yeah. oh, unbelievable. I just play with like Lisa Stansfield. <laughs> right, <laughs> toured all over the world. Lisa Stansfield. Most people listening to this won't know or care who that was. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. around the world. <laughs> Another right? note. Yes, like yeah. we were saying before, Jamie, the subtleties and that sort of stuff is what you appreciate. The yeah. longer you do it, eh? yeah, it's not sure. like, oh, it's fast. Who cares? Yeah. I don't even care about speed. It's like, no, it's does not. it feel good? And does it feel good when you hear it? Yep. Well, yes, yeah. absolutely. I mean, you yeah. can turn a drum machine up to 300 BPM yes, that's and what I don't play get. Yeah. 16th notes, right? Yep. Fast. I know. But is anyone going to feel it in the heart? No. No. Nah. And so um, why? So there's something going on, right? I've been yeah. having a, a lot of conversations with people about the speed thing recently. People overseas and you know, bandmates and whatever. And because I'm struggling i'm really struggling with this this so i don't in in <laughs> so in <laughs> modern metal right there's this thing where in the last 10 10 years it has been decided by i don't know i don't know where this started coming from but basically everything now is completely quantized gridded uh, and all velocities yeah. set to 100 mm-hmm. so what's happening a lot is guys are being tracked so they'll go on the track the drummers right they'll often um they'll get them to play on a kick pad because they don't want any um, kick bleed. Because no. what they do is they go and they quantize the notes. So if um, if they end up with bleed from the kick getting into the uh, overheads, they have a bit of a problem because they can't move stuff around cleanly, right? Right. This YouTube video I was watching the other day with a producer talking about this where he's like, I, w- I want the kick drum separate so I can just plug in whatever. If, if the guy can't play the rhythm, I just plug it in with MIDI. Right, mm. so all these albums are so the albums are coming out with gridded, quantized uh, velocity set to zero. So there's no feel, right? Um, guitars di'd, so they're not using real amps. They're, it's all um, amp mod- modulars yeah. and plugins. That because of, and the reason they they um, di the guitars is so they can chop it and grid and quantize the guitars. And again, mm. no bleed or well, no yeah. nothing. Yeah, right. Yeah. So and and because they're striving for machine like precision. Isn't the whole thing with why are we playing fast to begin with, right? It's to create energy. It doesn't matter the style, right? right. Well, yes, why does yeah. why does Tony Williams play fast? Because it's it frenetic, right? It gives energy, high energy. When you're playing really, really fast, the reason it sounds fast is because you're struggling, right? Because the harder you, it, you know, there's, en- tension. there's, there's that momentum tension. behind yeah, yeah, it, yeah, right? Mm. Um, and the far, particularly with uh, with the blast beat sort of material, right? It's yeah, it's fucking, it's hard to do. It's physically taxing on your body. The faster you go, the the more you you should be struggling, right? But that struggle is what gives it energy and aggression. Mm. So the second you do, you take all that out and set it all to just zero uh, grid, blah blah blah. Yeah, my drum machine plays, you know, 1,000 BPM. Big big deal, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, feel really disconnected. We're going to sound like old men, you know, complaining yeah, yeah, about know, that. Yeah. But um, <laughs> you've gone so far from four dudes in a room yeah. playing with passion yeah. at that point yeah. that it's almost unrecognizable. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I can you feel it? No. If, yeah. if they've recorded it in stages and they've just chopped the hell out of every note, yeah. Can you feel that? No. See, I've got, I've, yeah, like, no, no, you can't. You can't. No. See, I've got why, a problem with it. Just play, d- play mm. electronic music, man. It's like the, the way that, that a lot of these bands, not all, but a lot of, like what Jamie's talking about, the way that those same bands are composing the music, a lot of the time it's just written by one dude, yeah. usually the guitar player. He's already programmed the drum. So the drummer that comes on board, I don't need your, your ideas, mm. thanks very much. I just need your There's the file, just learn yourself. that. Mm. A lot of the ideas are like, no, that, why is he playing that beat to that? It'll be like, for yeah. example, let's say, you're writing back in black for the first time in 2019. Oh, Malcolm yeah. Young writes the riff and goes, <laughs> you feel, um, dam, 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 dam. I want the drum beat to go like this. Doof, ka, do, 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 ka, do, 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 yeah. ka, do, 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 do. Well, that's not going to sound good, And the riff good, will be it? a copy and, so, and paste. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the yeah. drum part <laughs> is just the kick drum and the snare drum mirroring the exact notes of the guitar riff and – as we know, that sometimes that works. Other times, you want to go in completely the different See, the grease. direction. You're going to get grease when mm. you've got human beings playing parts and reacting to each other. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, when right. it's not perfect, that is the grease, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. If the yeah. bass is a hundredth of a millisecond behind the kick drum, that might sound awesome. Yeah, yeah. 
totally recording totally. drums with this guy, like we're just talking about. So we did we did it with the real way with mics, and then of course we did enough takes. We hired the room for three days, and then we listened back through. It was pretty good. But I noticed that when you record, as you subsequent listens, you start to listen closer, and then you're like, oh, mm. And then we started going through things, going, oh, should we maybe tweak that? And then, and then that's the problem. You <laughs> yeah. see, we've recorded it properly. So because it's a, zero, really it's, a zero, it's a zero sum game. As if well. I do this, listen to that. Oh no, it's really fucking obvious. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, you've like, tried to move we, yeah, something yeah. because you've 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 rushed the end of a fill or something. Just it's mm. tiny, mm. but you oh, what if we fix that then because of the overheads? Yeah. The crazy it's not thing is, sound is particularly in metal, right? If you go back mm. and listen to old metal stuff that we all grew up on. The playing's shit. It's shit house, man. But it's just high energy, you know. Like, and it's legit. It's heart and soul. Yeah, a take, right? It's a one take. You know, you're on tape. You got there's no looking back. You know, yeah. and yeah. there's a bunch of um, producers I've always pay attention to. But there's a guy that was like he's watched as when he was tracking bands in the eighties. They'd come in. A lot of the time they'd just be live tracking, and the guys would just they'd be in different rooms, but they'd all have and they just have to okay go, and everyone has to get the song right. He's like, now it's like you barely have to get one note right. I'll just punch you in for that note. No, don't worry about it. You know, it's like the the technology now is so easy yeah. to to fuck with performances. Pre production too, eh? Because yeah. studio time was so expensive. Yeah, tick, yeah. So you had to have everything on lockdown yeah. when you hit the studio. Yeah. Whereas yeah. now it's it's all post production almost. Yeah. And and it, that old style approach allows for happy accidents of oh well, yeah. it sounds kind of fucked up, but it's we spent a million <laughs> bucks on it. But that. It sounding kind of fucked up makes it cool. You as an audience or you as a listener, you don't know what they were envisioning before it. Mm. You only hear the end product, you know. Yeah. Whereas now everyone's going for the. Everyone uses Stephen Slate drum samples. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like I can hear that fucking snare in my head. I've heard it on so many <laughs> albums. Yeah. Seriously, I, the second I hear it, I'm like Stephen Slate. Yeah, Stephen yeah. Slate. And uh, there's a kick and a snare and, oh, and the the um, drum kit from Hell. That fucking kick drum is on so many goddamn metal albums. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, man. It's like, why are we doing this? Like, yeah. I thought we were playing music to express something of ourselves. You know, like, isn't it art? I don't know. You know like, what I find really interesting? <laughs> I very rarely actually listen to the radio. Yeah. But if I do and I'm listening to old stuff, half the time the vocals are like out of tune or the harmonies are slightly off. Yeah. And it's like, wow. Yeah. This would have almost refreshing. Today. Yeah. yeah. But this is a classic and this has sold millions yeah. and it's off. I thought it might be interesting if we could myth bust. Yeah. That all metalheads are dirty and angry and <laughs> that sort of thing. I think most, some of the nicest people I've ever met have been metalheads. Yeah. And a good example of that is um, Cannibal Corpse. Um, Intimidating name. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Intimidating everything. But those guys are just the yeah, dude. loveliest dudes you've ever met. That's a big one. That's, yeah. I think that's still widely um, perceived as being Same true. Same thing about the audience. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. people perceive the audience in mosh pits as being – there's hardly ever trouble at metal gigs. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They're doing that in Perth. That's fun. Mm. No different to people playing rugby. Mm. You, you accuse no. people playing rugby that's of being angry. Yep. Um, yep. No, yep. no. They, it, it starts off as enjoyment. That's just expressing yeah. the way the music makes you feel, you know. Yeah. So, mm. Yeah. Mm. I was hoping that one was um, going to come up, though, because... Yeah, that's you know, pretty that's universal a really, one. Yeah, I'd have to agree. To that's a huge knock one. Um, knock it out of the water. And, and also yeah. really ch- chilled out people, I think. Yeah. Because we let it all out, there's oh. nothing we're holding back when we play. There's nothing music. left. So <laughs> we, in, in real life, we're actually really chilled out yeah. people. Mm. I don't think anger I'm, was any, ever a part of why I liked metal anyway. Maybe in my teens, but mm, it was just the yeah, aggre- yeah. aggression of the music well, and, and how it made too. you feel. And, and this broaden it to drummers. A lot, mm. of people, a lot of us drummers get flat for being, what's the joke, that we're all dumb. We're just content. Right? They're, just, yourself. they're just jealous because <laughs> we don't have to plug in to anything to sound good, right? Zombie apocalypse can come tomorrow. All of our gear <laughs> yeah, still that, sounds yeah. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they'll be just strumming away furiously on their yeah, nylon yeah. string acoustics. Yeah. Sorry, mate, I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. Nah, um, yeah, yeah, I would say yeah. That, I agree with Jeremy that definitely preconceptions about metal are totally wrong. But yeah. some people can really make people see why that is a thing. Like a lot of a lot of old black metal bands sort of push the envelope with stuff they did, so it made it seem like every metal band would so be pe- people living the stereotype. A eh? yeah, uh, I think oh, of course, sort of yeah, probably some, on it a little bit. But for the most part, I think but that's yeah. true. I don't think it's any different from somebody making a horror movie. I know you're a big horror fan. Jeremy, oh, nobody's mate. accusing yeah. horror directors of being Satanists mm. or being weird. Yeah, they're just making a movie about that, and it's a scary theme. It's entertainment, and but 
some people, when it's expressed the same subject matter in music, they get all offended, like, what's your problem, man? Yeah. Why are you so angry? No, 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 it's just a, it's a piece of art. Yeah. It's just that, That's a really good parallel. I'm a horror nut as well. Do you get upset at the directors who make these movies and come up with these ideas? Of course you don't. Ah, Why would you? That's well, it's, it's a parallel, certainly, from the reasons that I like, the stuff that I like is, yeah, it's not really, for me, it's not the uh, blood and gore. I don't know. There's, not, there's not actually no bands that I listen to with that kind of those kind mm. of themes. But the stuff that I do listen to is either very nihilistic kind of themes or extremely it was extremely dark thematics, right? Mm-hmm. But the crazy thing is, is like when people have been like, "How do you listen to that shit?" It's like, well, how do you watch a Lars von Trier film? Yep. Mm. Or yep. even just a Tarantino film. It just seems so weird to me that music pigeonholes you into being. Yeah. Or well, people think that it's just it's oh it's just shitty noise like how and it's, you're not you're not digging deep enough in the same reason that you know like some what about like uh, I don't know, the taxi driver or something like phenomenal like what about the new Joker film fantastic well, yeah, piece of art I haven't actually seen yeah. that yet but no, yeah I, I you loved know, it's it. like these it's great. yeah and these these pieces of cinema and art that that are elevated to like I mean they're mainstream right but it's incredibly dark it's just exploring dark themes mm. it's just strange that we like music can only be about love and uh, uh, happiness yeah. and parties mm. and that's fine. Yeah, why don't we but- just all listen to the, the Smurfs theme then? <laughs> well, I think music for some people is just a very casual, yep. semi-interested in it. It's on at the office. Put on the back. You know, the radio's yeah, sure. on and you're yeah. doing your nine to five and it's just there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And mm. it's easy to consume. Whereas some people like us are much more passionate You'd about it. You'd have to it. say almost obsessed, wouldn't you? You'd, yeah. Compared yeah. to the, your average yeah. Just like I'm not into cars, you know. It's like, for example, yeah. I know I've got friends that's so in, they're as into their cars as I am about drumming. But I can understand they are into something yeah. as much as I'm into playing the drums. That makes sense to me. You know what I mean? Mm. But I know what you mean. It's like getting upset. People get really, including myself, get quite emotional <laughs> about about music if you, if somebody else doesn't oh, course, like what course. they like. Yeah. But mm. they're not like that with other things. Like if if I have a favourite food and I say, "Oh, do you want some of that?" and you say, "No, I hate that shit." I don't mind. I'm not yeah, upset with yeah, you yeah. because you don't like my favourite food. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But when it gets to music, some people get really oh, it's, it's touchy, man. It's touchy. It's some, yeah, yeah, and I, for whatever reason, it's like music has all, well, particularly in, I guess the last 50, 60 years, right, it's gone from just being a source of entertainment. It's, it's now it's like you hang your whole identity on it. Yeah. It, whole niches and like mm. uh, whole scenes and you only associate with people from your seat. You know, like it's... It's something else, man. It is. A, like, it's a. It's a thing, you know. Mm. And I don't know if maybe like punk and stuff probably started that. I guess your uh, self identification, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. You, we want to. We well, I guess for for metal, it's a very individual thing. Like even when I was at high school, not a lot of kids into metal. Yeah, mm. yeah. But the ones that are, are into it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, this is my thing. So it makes you because it's less popular. It makes it feel. I, more I personal. remember that. Yeah. It's more yeah. of mine. Yeah. It's not just whatever. Yeah. It's. There's definitely that aspect to it. I definitely remember that feeling from high school mm. where it's like there was literally no one at high school that was into the same stuff that me and a couple of others were, and that felt kind of like cool. Like, yeah, you know, especially it was, for discovering it. Yeah, and, and it's no like it wasn't something that just – It's like a secret that you've yeah, got. You can yeah, keep it to yourself. It's definitely like, that, man, that, just, yeah. that appeal to it, you know. Mm. And that was before internet where everything was just thrown at you yes. anyway, so you kind of had to find it by some other means, yeah. and it was yeah, kind of yeah, special. Sure. Yeah. Are we out of myths? Um, I guess to outsiders outside of metal, the, if we're talking drumming, so mm-hmm. there's the myth that the blast beat paradigm <laughs> yeah. is just the most fucked up thing ever. Uh, what the hell, you know? There's good blast beats and there's bad blast beats. Typically a blast beat, right, as everyone knows, is just a 16th note roll between hand and foot, essentially. Uh, there's obviously, there's other variations of it, but the purpose of it is not to just be a complete barrage of notes. It's It's more like what do I get out of listening to a blast beat? Because I certainly don't find them boring to listen to. Like they, I think they are in service of a song. I think if you're going to do a drum uh, solo and you start playing blast beats, I think you should probably leave. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's not, you know, it's a, t- it's a very uh, specific musical device that serves very specific kinds of uh, riffs mm-hmm. uh, or, or, or sections. And the way that I guess that we, those of us that enjoy the style of music, the way that we listen to them, I, you don't perceive it as just someone mashing. You know, you you hear the like we were talking about before. You hear the subdivisions, and the best people that are playing, uh, well, the best style of blast beats, or at least the the players that execute these the best. They, there's a lot of subtlety to them, so there's a lot of uh, accenting on like a lot of syncopation between, the, particularly with the the right hand, 
you can do all sorts of cool stuff with like closed hi hat, open hi hat patterns if you're playing the the leading foot with the uh, one footed style. There's a million things that you can do with them, and I guess it's just um, also it's not really much of a myth because uh, Thomas Lang has started using them. I've, I've seen Chris Coleman do them in solos and stuff. Yeah. Like it's kind of seeping into the consciousness, I guess. Mm. Well, even unintentionally, um, Vinnie Colaiuta. If you watch the Zildjian Day solo, oh, he does the one. Yeah, and, yeah, of course. You know what I'm like talking the, about? The, the, him yeah, and Wickle and, and Gad. And he just does it. There's a section that always reminds me of. Yep. He just goes into that, not for very long, but he's doing it back yeah, then. Yeah. I guarantee if you go through all of Buddy Rich's solos, there would have been a moment where he would have been going, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, mm. I don't see talking about metal, for example, these two guys are fucking awesome at blast beats. I purposely, I listen to music that has blast beating in them, but in my recorded music, I've never ever got to the point where I could play it where I'd be like, Yeah, that yeah. they can go in a song and I'll be happy with it. Yeah, yeah. That's just mm. like a lot of other beats that... That's what I'm saying, and, and I, we're on the same page because mm. we know that it's a musical device. Yeah, that's right. If it was mm. just a, uh, like, macho, like, look how fast I can play kind of thing... Yeah, yeah. ...you know, um, it's not about that. And that's the... And I see a lot of metal players that it, it is definitely about that, where it's just <laughs> like, right. I'm, I'm just going to play... Honor. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, and you'll see it all over YouTube, like, um, double kick, uh, you know, bomb blast at, um, at 260 BPM, yeah. and they tag the BPM on there. It's like, mm, <laughs> fucking, right. oh, cool, Who's man. Watching like, yeah. 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 yeah, but then, and then you get these these wars of, like, kids just arguing, like, oh, Kalias is the fastest, he'll never be beaten. Now a guy from Flesh God's fastest. It's like, oh, my fucking God. Yeah. And they're arguing over a single stroke roll, man. Yeah. Um, you know, or, or, or doubles or whatever. It's like, are they, it's, are, it's, these, are they getting albums and then going, I'm not sure if I like this. Yet I'll get my metronome out, yeah. and I'm going yeah. to just see. If oh, it's it, at two seventy BPM. If, sold. You if know? it's not over yeah. that, though, I'm not actually allowed <laughs> yeah. to like this record. Yeah, we had a, a label person that said to us a few years ago. Oh, we were talking about like the next album that we had coming up, and he's like, "Oh, I mean, here's an idea. Like, what about if you do like like the fastest blast beat you've ever played, and we can like kind of use that as a as a marketing you go tool. marketing guy." And I was just like, <laughs> "I don't know, you're yeah." Like, get the <laughs> thing. Like, missing the yeah, point. Yeah, missing the point. Uh, yeah. what did, did, you say, did you say anything to him? I just said, dude, that's not our. It's that's not our the way we roll. Dude, that's lame. Well, um, I don't understand. This is taking music and turning it into a sport. Yeah. That's the side. And I get it why fast music has this thing to it, mm. um, but I just don't. Mm. It doesn't speak to me. Yeah. Mm. I've had people, and I'm sure you've had millions of people too, ask, like, what BPM yeah, you yeah, play at. I, like, yeah. I don't actually know because I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Maybe you could ask the guy that recorded me. He might yeah. he might have it on his screen, but yeah. I don't. Yeah. don't I, I get that. Yeah. 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 What's your top BPM? And yeah. then the next question is, what's the secret, right? Yep. What's mm. the secret? Mm. How do you I should say um, I like to play my LPs on thirty three. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's RPM, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would have it as well, like the the sixteenth thing with the feet, right? It just becomes people just get fixated on it, and I'm to me, I'm like, it's just a baseline requirement of the style. To be able to play certain parts, yeah, you just have to roll. You have to roll sixteenths. I've never really thought about it too much beyond that, but it's there's this culture now of like, yeah, it's a war. It's who can get the fastest and what's yeah. the, the technique to get but at the what fastest. Cost, eh? mm. What? There's so many other things going on mm. in this music to like pick up on. How did you get fast feet? How as you'd call them, Jamie, punishes. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah well, not. <laughs> we might have to cut some of this shit. <laughs> when extreme metal first started. At late 80s and 90s, it was never about this kind of like macho, who's the fastest guy? I think it's unavoidable because everybody, when everybody started recording digitally, then everything started to be gridded up. When you, were, We did our first EP at York Street when that was still going, and that was to tape. Yeah. yeah. Nobody oh, even talked. Was that the tape? Yeah, it was the tape. Click track was not even mentioned by anybody. Yeah. Wow. Not, the engin- it was, uh, not the engineers, nobody. We just like practice the songs, get them as tight as you can yeah, yeah. and record yeah. them. How do they go? What's the tempo of the song? If I'm counting yeah. it in, I'm yeah. thinking the riff in my head. Okay, that's the yeah, tempo, yeah. you know. And right or wrong, that meant that that came out as an honest representation of the songs as we practiced them. It's like that's a it. photograph. Of yeah. you I was about to say, man, it's a time, time, you know? time capsule. Mm. Yeah. yeah, which is beautiful. Yeah. You know? And for better or worse, you go back and listen to that and it'll transport you right back to that yeah. Yeah. in yeah. a way to that moment. Whereas yeah. if it was all fixed, there's no point in time that's, that doesn't really... And you can look back on it and go, oh, you know, listen to that. Oh, we could have done it. Yeah, but yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it, man. Mm. I've, I've talked to a bunch of kind of like young guys that are like, I don't know, fans or whatever, and they're, they're developing some stuff. They've got some music and that, but they're not sure how to, like at what point to record it because it just has to be perfect. And I said, you just have to put it out. 
Because, yeah. and I said, in two years, you'll look back and it will suck. It will suck. Oh, I mean, it, it might not. But nine <laughs> yeah. times out of ten, the first thing that you release is going to be rough. So just get it out of the way. Just get it out of the way. Like, get over it. Because yeah, yeah. Um, this holding on to this perfection thing is just killing yeah. people, man. That's just, your first statement to the world. Right? Yeah. It's like, people are used to hearing stuff gridded and stuff now, mm. so it, it sounds natural to them. Yep. But you hear an old album and it's like, wow, that actually sounds sloppy. Yeah. But it's yeah. not. It's just yeah. well, see real. That, yeah. That's a, a real big, problem. Man. Yeah. All my favourite drums. Most of my favorite drummers actually kick single kick guys. Like if I, mm. my three favorite drummers would be John Bonham, Ian Pace, Nick and McBrain, all single kick yep. guys, all old dudes. And you let a lot of those isolated tracks pop up now. Yeah. Oh, and you can hear them squeaking. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And, and, yeah, yeah. And especially Nico, I mean, all those drummers are different. Like you've got Bonham who's behind the beat. Yep. You've got Nico, you've got Ian Pace from Deep Purple. Accurate, he's pretty on. And then you've got Nico who pushes. Yep. With that whole Iron Maiden, din da lin da lin da da the gallopy thing. Yeah. And then you listen to the isolated track and it's like, man, that's out. It sounds he, right. There's yeah, a missing rough, bass yeah. drum and that triplet he made. Yep. But then what were, the, what were the other musos in the band? Well, the drums are done. We yeah. packed up the kit. Yeah. <laughs> we checked three yeah, days yeah. ago when we said, okay, this is the last <laughs> rap. Do we want to do, redo yeah, the yeah. drum takes? Mm-hmm. Nah, we're good. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then as the bass player comes in to do his tracks, like, oh, well, that feel rushes and that feel drags. Yep. Well, that's your problem now, buddy. And that's what makes <laughs> bands of, good because favorite, that bass player yeah. knows his drummer so well that he could yeah, he yeah, could yeah. move with yeah. the drummer as that's he's right. listening and recording. Yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. Pull it back a bit. Yeah, cool. Mm. We yeah. have that in, in our band. Mm. Like it's because just because we've been playing so long, I know exactly how the other guys play, and they mm. know exactly where I'm going to be putting something, and they know mm. how to either allow for it or oh, yep, this is the part where he he's going to do that for a bit. <laughs> you know, like yeah, man, it's a dialogue, right? Yeah, every band's got that. You probably yeah. have things like where, like when you play live, that as long as you start the fill <laughs> in the same place and end it in the same place as the recording, then the other guys are going to be okay with it. Especially when you're playing at your tempos. And I'm the same as that. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to change it up. Yeah. And you'll get the sidelong glance from, from the non drummers in the band. They'll be just checking. Okay. You know, like, but they're there with you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah totally. They'll yeah. prick up an ear, but they knew they've still felt safe because yeah. you know each other's mm, style, yeah. you know. That safe word, I think that's a real important thing that particularly in, in metal playing, that that foundational aspect of, of being a drummer and leading the band, allowing the other guys in the band to feel safe. Yeah. That every night you count off and they don't even have to think. Like I've talked about this with uh, Paul especially. He's like when we're halfway through a tour, he's like, I'm not even really paying attention to you anymore. Because it's just it's so back of the hand. Mm-hmm. If something happens that goes wrong, it's, you can correct it super quick. Even if we're playing fast, rugged stuff, it like it has to be it has to f- a feel good. But it also yeah that safety for your other band members. That's a mm. crucial mm. ingredient, and it's something mm. you only really learn just from doing it again and again and again. You know? And as a drummer, you've got to own that. I was watching. I'm big. Jamie's talking about for drummers who you not love the drummer. You're not necessarily a fan of the band. I'm a huge fan of Todd Sukerman. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. a huge sticks fan, no, but yeah, I same, love same. the way he yeah, plays, yeah. Mm-hmm. and he's such a great educator yeah. too. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, if you're the drummer, it doesn't matter what band you're in. Everybody want you're the drummer. I'm gonna lay it down. How's the song go? It goes like this: three, <laughs> four. Nobody wants this drummer. Is that okay, guys? Yeah. Is this all right? Yeah. Is, am I speeding that up? Just yeah. never works. Yeah. That's not gonna work. Never no, works. No, no. So you got to yeah. you got to own it. You know, yeah. um, not in backbeat music, right? Yeah, you just. I, I would probably say in, in any kind of music, you know. Maybe yeah. Guess yeah. it's in drummer. Ooh. Yeah, no, yeah, mm. no good, no good. That's actually know. something I've learned a lot about even in the last couple of years teaching, like yourself. Not so much all the time, but when I was younger, like much younger, I could never separate the velocity from playing loud mm-hmm. and playing hard. Yeah. And the more that I teach, I've actually, it's really helped me a lot. Just your stick height, if you want it louder, mm. just let the stick come up, just let it mm. Do its own thing, Don't get and if you want it quieter, then you you keep it low. You yep. just keep it low. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I re- I really think there's a sweet spot with drums and cymbals mm. where they just sing. Yep. And any more, yep. You're just choking them. Yeah, yep. too yeah. hard. To choke and any less, and you're not going to get any. Yeah, the they're, to- they're totally. Yeah. So yeah, I don't crack cymbals anymore, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah, uh, occasionally China, so I'll crash. You break sticks. Cr- I don't break sticks. No, not anymore. Because I feel it flex and put it down. They just and flake oh, to bits. You feel and and they get a bit white. They go, ah, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah that'll be tough. another myth. People will <laughs> think that you guys are just chopping through no. tree after tree, but because it's not the same. The it's the same thing that you were talking about. So loose, super loose grip, and letting yeah, letting the stick do the work. I mean, this is not this is not rocket science. This is the, what all the best drummers in the world say, so. isn't it? Yeah, totally. And hitting hard doesn't mean from. Up here, you know, it's it's just momentum, you know.
would say one of the few advantages I have over some drummers out, out there is that I found out a long time ago that I really like practicing, <laughs> and I just love. Seeing, yeah, totally. I love being in that that mode with it, yeah. and just having all my gear around me and tuning that and playing. It's your that, happy. It's your meditation that happy yeah. place. Oh, Actually, that and medit- it's free. Yeah. It doesn't cost anything. I can soak mm. hours into that. I don't need anybody to entertain me. I consider myself really lucky. Yeah that I found my favourite thing early on because yep. I've seen a lot of people struggle. A lot of people have made a lot of money, but they're like, they go through their life rudderless. Yep. They're trying to find that thing yep. yeah. that they can identify and hold on to. And, and like I say, same with, with you guys, all of us. So lucky you found that early. The only question you have to ask yourself is like, if, if your band or your project that you're in at the moment went away, or if your gigs went away, would you still play drums? You know, you would did. you still... Mm. Do the same amount of work? Yeah, of course. What the fuck? I'd be Wait. so excited. If I had no I'd probably be so excited because I'd just be <laughs> racing to the patch room. I can do all this yeah. stuff now. You can do so, your, I mean, you practice yeah. your blast beats then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, but I'll report back on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe we could do a, another round. What's one piece of advice you'd give 20 year old Jamie or yeah. 20 year old drummer? I feel by 20, I was kind of doing things more or less, maybe 16 year old. Okay. Um, I would have loved to have taken jazz lessons like right. really early on because I feel like I'm just always chasing my tail because mm-hmm. trying to split my time between, well, A, my work, and then basically it's work, band, and there's, there's obviously my own practice stuff. But in terms of that uh, jazz feel, I, it's, it's awkward, you know, and it's because I don't do it. It's not my thing that I do all of the time. It's like what you were saying, you know. Mm. Um, I would never sit down and be like, "Hey, check out this." <laughs> nah, you know, like it's it's it is what it is. It's I've put all my time into playing the material that that my band plays essentially, um, and that's pretty far reaching. Like it's we kind of we touch all kind of dynamics, but in terms of swing, we don't swing ever. Right. You say that about a lot of most metal, I would say. Yeah, but intentionally, we don't. Mm-hmm. It's not a style that. I don't want swing. Your band's style. like Clutch, which is not metal. That drum is great. You put me onto him. He's yeah, yeah. he's one of the most organic guys with that kind of OG feel. Yeah, there's not many dudes like him. He hasn't around. always had that feel too. No, which is the early crazy. stuff. Yeah, he, so that gives me stuff, yeah. uh, gives me a bit of hope. But it's like yeah, mm. that that's probably the one thing that yeah. Because I so I you feel, would have expanded a bit earlier. I would have just liked. I would have liked to have had less, uh, jazz lessons specifically. Specifically, jazz, jazz lessons. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because I was always in, into it, but I was far more into playing extreme metal yeah. stuff, you know. What would you tell your 20-year-old Mark or 20-year-old drummer coming through? Um, don't waste your money on alcohol and cigarettes because <laughs> you can have nice gear instead. And yeah, live. Um, you drum. <laughs> but similar to Jamie where, you know, like you say, but the, see, again, jazz to me is like the classical example of, of drums. That's, that's the origin where all the techniques, everything yeah. that we, if you can learn that, you know, I might, like like you say, Todd Sukerman, he can play jazz legit and he can mm. play rock. If I had had a teacher to be able to structure certain ways to practice, to, to be able to get better at certain things that will help all the styles. I, right. I've spent so long as a stubborn teenager. Yeah, I was practicing, but I just listened to. You're just hammering the same thing. Yeah, and I just listened to whatever. That's a real trap, eh? Whatever it was at full speed, and I would just repeatedly practice it at full speed. Mistake, 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 mistake. Furious, frustrated. Wouldn't even, left to my own devices, never slow it down. Never. And and think back. And now that's just that's the first thing I tell my students. And and it's also good for me because I'll be teaching them songs and grooves, and I'm now I get a lot of satisfaction out of myself that I can learn this song here and I can now with a lot of stuff I can almost at will play it as slowly as I want to and yeah. that's compared to me as a young guy that's when I know I have it yeah, yeah I can now play this yes it's up to speed it's quite yeah. quick but I can now slow it down at will almost as slow as I want yeah. that's, really, that's when I know yeah, I've yeah. really it's got it's no good it. being able to just do a groove at one tempo no. <laughs> and then go okay play, play at 50 BPM slower no absolutely can't yeah. Yeah. I learned that in the drum shop yeah. as a, I think I was trolled by an old jazz guy and, I, and you know because you'd close the shop and then it'd be like oh, I've been waiting to hit that kit all day you know what I mean but there's been customers around like excellent cash up I'll have a bit of a hoon on that new Gretsch or that new DW whatever <laughs> and um, certain customers like these two guys you know you'd let them hang out afterwards that's all good yeah. you know I was playing this thing and this old guy came in he's like oh that's pretty cool it's like a sort of a, a bit of a double paradiddle half time groove you know slow that down for me yeah, because you don't know. To what my you're horror, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could not. I I could only play it at one tempo. Yeah. I tried to slow it down, and it's just awful. And he I, he gave me a little wink. He's like, oh, "You get it." 
What I've come to realize <laughs> over memory. the years yeah, yeah. Yeah. Memory. is if you can't slow it down and get into the DNA of it, yeah. you actually can't play it. Yes. You haven't got it yet. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so that's if you correct. can only play it, like you said, at one tempo, yeah. you've just learned a pattern like a, a monkey. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's no there's no real learning going and on. And there's no there. analysis of what like you said, the DNA of it. That's exactly mm. right. If you do a gig and the band a bit of adrenaline, ten BPM faster, yep. and you can't execute it, yep. what good was that? Yeah. Mm. Yep. And uh, just to bounce off that point, so that there's a real big thing with that with double kick playing. So and we're we're only talking about like constant sixteenths, right? So there's a thing where people can they can leg it out, right? Anyone can do that slow enough, right? Mm. And you get to a tempo range where you have to start engaging some other muscles, otherwise yes, you're going to kill yes. yourself, yeah. right? So, <laughs> the, and these tempo ranges, it's commonly kind of thought of that there's three sort of ranges, right? Fantastic players can go from zero up to what, whatever tempo we're uh, uh, experimenting with. Um, and you you can do it cleanly you know, all yeah. the way up, you know, and you, and it's that transitioning between yeah. all leg yeah. to leg and a bit of ankle. Same with wrists and fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, right? Yeah. 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 Changing between singles and doubles, you know, clean. This is the art form yeah. of drumming, though. Eh? Yeah, mm. and it's like to mechanical. Learn this pattern. Yep. Do this. Do that. And it's the difference between so anyone can play slow, anyone can play fast. You, anyone can twitch out notes, right? But mm. being able to control everything in between. Yes. yes. Then you're like that's it's control, right? That's mm. it's not yep. about fucking speed or tempo. Like it's about control. And, and control it, sounds better. Yes. Control absolutely. sounds good. Far more impressive sounding. Yeah. And Drummer that's got a lot of headroom, yep. As opposed to someone who's oh, maxed dude, out all the time. This headroom—that's mm-hmm. crazy. So, like, literally, I've been using that term headroom for people have been asking us about playing live and shit. And I'm like, the re- so a lot of the times we play live with um, Click because um, a guitarist loops a lot of stuff. Yeah, and I don't know. And but I say one benefit of it is it gives us headroom. Shows feel slow because you, <laughs> right, right, because of the adrenaline. Yeah. Different um, environment, gears a little bit yeah, different course. every night. You can't yeah. hear fucking mm. anything on stage, no problem, because you've got you've got this click track that you're playing to, but it gives you headroom, and you just it just makes things so much more powerful and effective, yeah. you know. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, mm. Jeremy, any any advice for twenty um, year old Jeremy? You're kind of similar to what Jamie said, actually. What um, like when I moved because I'm from Hawkes Bay, so I moved to Wellington first to try and start up the whole music thing, and um, I think I kind of. Yeah, I was so like one track minded of doing mm. like the metal thing that I right. didn't. I was really interested in doing jazz or something else as well, but I just sort of fixated on this one thing and mm. yeah, yeah, just because I kind of thought that I had to because you know it takes so much work. I was mm. like, I can't do be doing jazz. What am I? I'm, I'm here to try yeah. and be a metal drummer, so yeah. that's what I got to do. My social life and my work life that kind of all suffered because I was just so on track about it, which kind of helped me in a way. It got got me through a lot of. Um, Early barriers of, of learning the styles. I don't know you had stuff. a social life, Jeremy. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I mean. It was a good. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's kind of what I. Yeah. So I'm sort of going back now and just saying, no, it's okay to play jazz. I don't have to be this metal guy. Like, I don't actually care about it anymore. It's just about drumming and having fun. Yeah. A lot of drumming or being in a band is personality, right? Mm-hmm. It's the old thing, eh? You could be the best drummer in the world, but if you're an absolute dickhead, I've met many great players that are dickheads. Yeah, and yeah, it's, same. It's, uh, and I've met a lot of shitty players that are really cool dudes. Yeah, and, and you, you, will, you will jam with the the, yeah. the the person with less skill. Yeah, one Absolutely. hour on stage, 23 in a bus or some scenario like that, that gets tired real quick, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Being in New Zealand too, I mean, we've done a hell of a lot of support gigs for international touring bands and you just can't, you can't really pick their personalities judging by, they're all Kind of metal. Some of them are hard rock. Some of them are. until you meet them, yeah, yeah you yeah, never yeah. know who's going to be cool and who's not. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Really can't guess it. Some of the some of the guys that you thought would be chilled out are really uptight. Some of the guys that you thought would be the opposite. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. We'll have to uh, take the mics off and. <laughs> take oh, that we one played a bit with further. <laughs> like one, one that springs to mind. We played with. Um, we're lucky enough to play with Opeth from Sweden. Amazing guys. There's a band that's changed a lot yep. musically in their career, but amazing musicians, whatever way you look at it. But they were just the nicest, most humble, mm. down-to-earth guys who wanted to have a laugh. Actually, that's a, that's a tip I'd give young metalers who are, if you're keen on meeting your idols, don't be a dick. And when, <laughs> No, what I'm saying is if you they will spend time with you. If you go up to them, mm. like I actually saw this happen firsthand, um, you can play with them but got lucky enough to meet Thomas Hark from Meshuggah, and the amount, that poor dude, the amount of oh, dude, he's God. just trying to chill out 
after he's and and he's got fans coming up to him and going, oh, you know, track three on in that album, oh, you're half a, at, at, at bar yeah, yeah. at bar eleven. Again, missing the point, right? Yeah, yeah, at bar point. eleven, you change from seven eight into thirteen eleven, <laughs> and and you can just see him shut down. You can just literally yeah. see him going, oh, um, oh, thanks, man. He's being polite, but yeah. you can just see him and go, here we go. He's like and letting these kids down. I'm, I hate to say this to you, dude, but we don't write our music out. That's awesome that you've written it out and that you perceive it like that. We write our music like bands, you know, the guitar player has yeah, a riff, da, 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 and and he's oh well, let's try find a yeah. beat for that. It's not so you want to hang out with here, be like a normal human. Um Don't have a laugh with them, <laughs> hang out with them, make give them something that, that they can relax and let their guard mm. down and you know, and then you can talk about geeky drum stuff. The best, the best feedback yeah. ever is a handshake, and that was fucking yeah, yeah. awesome. Cheers. <laughs> that's what I'd, if I yeah. and you, if there's a drummer I really like, that, that's about all I'll give them. Like, thank well, you so like, much for the gig. A, yeah. That was so yeah. amazing to see you play. Um, please come yeah. back. I'm yeah. kind of, it's kind of like at clinics, you know, like the whoever's right there in front of you, and, and I know people line up and they want to they want to meet them and stuff. I'm kind of kind of like, no, I'm, I'm just so blown way. away at the performance. I'm like, I, don't, I just make a fool of myself. I'll just I'll yeah. just go home demoralized and uh, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. but. Can I, can I just tell a story? You were there, Matt Gasker. Oh, I was yeah, lucky yeah. enough to organise a drum clinic. He's a tarma player like, like mm-hmm. myself. He came to Auckland. And it was really cool. I got to order in his drums, set them up perfectly, hang out with him, go out to dinner, um, talk about to Piha. Nice you know, he's a real cool dude. At the end, okay, guys, if you want to get something signed, now's your chance. We've got 15 minutes lined up by the drum kit. And, he, and anyway, this kid had a little, like a 10-inch drum head. He threw it at him. He hit him in the head with it like a frisbee. Oh, was he trying to jump the queue <laughs> yeah. to get his thing signed? Yeah. I was so embarrassed. I was like, I'm so sorry, man. I, I apologise on behalf of all New Zealand. Please come back. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's bad, bad form. But don't do yeah. things like that, you know. No, yeah, like yeah. I say, show your appreciation just by being yeah. Yeah, a gentleman. Mm. Thank you so much. It was great to see you yeah. perform. That's kind of what the internet and stuff has kind of done to people as well. Yeah. It's kind yeah, of made them more about... Oh, this guy's fucking awesome. I'm going to go and just pick his brain mm. versus like, he's just a person. Maybe I should just be normal to him, you know? That's <laughs> why. Yeah. I don't know. He it's happens to be good doing. at drums. He's still a human being. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah, it's like knock down that wall of like, you're meeting someone that you've never met before. Yeah. Yes, I noticed on Instagram just, you had this for breakfast this yeah. morning. Um, how did that agree with you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just got to expunge everything they can from that one meeting. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You poor yeah. guys. Yeah. We're going to have to wrap up. You mentioned support shows that you've done with the band. Let's hear, like, who you've played with and some of the big shows. and some well, of the good show. I mean, Ozzy Osbourne is a big one. We've played with Opeth. We've played with Lamb of God three times, which is, um, to We're be honest, I'm not gigs. a huge – they're they're a solid metal band, don't get me wrong. They're not my favourite metal band, but the nice thing was we – you know, when we went for the first one, you send your CV in and they picked it. The next two times they picked us – they're like, oh, you, that'd be cool. You, awesome. you guys want the sport? That's that's really nice to get yeah. that. You're not, and where you know, are these gigs, man? Oh, Power Station or um, played Town Hall with Lamb God. That was pretty cool. Sometimes King's Arms with small mm. sports. So these are iconic gigs. Like, well, yeah. Are these sort of best day of your life kind of well, things? They, or? And they're also really good because, you know, the, just on the surface, it's great because you're getting to play to all these other dudes who've travelled from that because these bands would only play Auckland. Yeah. You know, so people – Travel from South Island, wow. so that's your, our chance as the sport band to make a good impression. Hopefully, not piss them off, and they maybe might like us too. You know mm. what I mean? It's like, right? Yeah, heaps of it, like uh, Arch Enemy, and is this all worth subtract? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Helmet, that was cool. Particularly when you're young, like the, getting those first, and you would, well, we would all feel the same thing. It's like you're playing with these iconic bands that you've mm. been, you've either been listening to or you're just aware of for the last since you've grown up. Yeah, man, the first couple that you have to pinch yourself because it, it really feels like that's awesome. Man. And yeah, we did Slayer. I was scared, man. Yeah, I, mean, and I was shitting my pants because they, you know, yeah. yeah I mean, but st- but still to this day, it's like you know, playing festivals and stuff overseas. Get, are you getting to see bands that you've been listening to for years, see them in the flesh in a, in a kind of different environment is insane. There's been a number of occasions where we've played with bands and we t- it f- turns out that they're a fan of ours. Or, oh, that's amazing. You know, and it's like that's the shit that's really humbling. Mm. So we've had a lot of kind of cool positive experiences like that where we did Cannibal Corpse. That was the first kind of big in a death metal context. Back then, extreme metal bands didn't really make it down this yeah. end of the world that so much it was a at really all. Big, so. Yeah, I mean, there were, there were other bands, uh, American bands. There was Deeds of Flesh, Disgorge, um, kind of more and more far more of an right. extreme kind of end of the spectrum. But uh, Cannibal Corpse was kind of like the big one that everyone's heard that kind of band. I and mean, it was like 
Yeah, it's super humbling. So yeah, I mean, it's a small, small world, it small is, industry, yeah. right? Yep. And you and you forget that we all sit around watching YouTube drum videos. Mm. Or, or or your favorite bands, or whatever. Well, those fuckers do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, like they're killing time in airports yeah. and all sorts, man. Well, like you know, or just yeah. it's. Um, but that's how they got good on the drums too, yeah. by just absorbing everything they yeah. possibly could, and, and it's, it's not going to stop just because they start to get a regular paycheck. Then uh, they're, they're yeah. oh, I don't need to worry about that now. No, of I'll course, just, I'm above all that now. Yeah, now what? Well, I'm just yeah, going to yeah. party now. No hell, but no, it's, it's. I don't know. It's cool, man. I don't. What? What, what can I say? Mm. Um, Jimmy, you want to tell us a little bit about some of your highlight, oh, man, your yeah, highlight stuff? Slayer, Megadeth, Orbit Angel. They're just all lost on the Were you now. pinching yourself Chimera. as well or were you uh, just in the zone or no, how were you feeling I about these I kind things? of realised at that point that it was, yeah, I didn't want to be a dick like Jamie was saying. Just don't, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't um, hammer them with questions. Just kind of just ask them how just they're doing normal. and just help them out with setting up or if you need to, just stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, just humbling. Yeah. I remember, I'm sure we didn't play with them but big fan, obviously, and I was lucky enough to be working at the drum store, so I got to put the kit, again, got to put the kit together for him, which is a lot of fun when you're, you know, it's a, a drummy really respect. Yeah, yeah, I get no, to, no those sizes, I get to rehead the whole kit, tune it up, get ready for him, yeah. and watching a guy like that just, you know, love his style, love the way, and he finished the show, and what does he do? He goes off stage, gets the towel, has a drink of water, talks to the boy, you know, the band have a power, well, how was that, you know, as you do. Everybody gets has a bit of it after the game. <laughs> how was that, how was yours, yeah, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Everybody that does shit. that, right? We yeah, all do yeah, that. Yeah. And uh, and then what's he doing? 15 minutes later, once all the punters are gone, he's back on stage packing up his own drum kit. Wow. I was, I'm like, I can do that. He's like, actually, if you don't mind, I quite yeah, yeah, like probably. to do this because it's a good yep. quiet time for me. I can reflect on the show. I just break everything down, and I'm like, oh well, I'll give you a hand if you don't mind. That was like that's huge memory for me. Wow, got to hang out with him. We just packed down the gear and had a bit of a chat. I thought you were going to say he was back on a practice pad or something like no, that. No, <laughs> <laughs> but um, just a really cool human experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where and it wasn't even playing the drums; it was just packing them down together and just having a, a, a chat. You know, and he was treating me an equal drummer, but it just you know, mm. just getting the job done and. This yeah, is the totally, way I like yeah, to do it, and I just yeah. thought that was a really good insight for me. I'm like, that's awesome. You know, the way people talk about you online is like you're a god who who has no weaknesses and you could – Yeah, and, yeah totally. and you just, you know, yeah. um, taking some quiet time for Fine yourself time. after the gig, have a beer, pack down my drum kit. Beauty. As always, it feels like you're just warming up. Well, maybe do a part could, two, mate. Yeah, do a part two down the track for sure. I really appreciate yeah. you, you having me, no, having us. Thanks having a lot. Yeah, thanks. And um, hopefully – we can get this out to all the metlers and the non metlers as well, you know? Because mm. there's, a, I think there's a lot to be taken away. Eh? Yeah, totally. Not all about blast beats and double <laughs> kick. Yeah. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. No, yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thanks a lot, yeah. guys. Thanks, Sweet. Man. Thanks, Thanks, man. man. See you.